We worked a problem previously where we had English sentences that we wanted to turn into symbols. In this problem, we're going to do it kind of reverse. We're going to have some ex logical expressions in terms of symbols, and we're going to turn it back into an English sentence. So the quantities that we're going to be working with here are B and T. B stands for I will eat bacon, and T stands for I will eat toast. So these are legitimate logical statements because the statement I will eat bacon could be true or false. Either you will eat it or you won't. So that is something that can evaluate to true or false. And what we're going to do in this problem is we are going to go from symbols back to English sentences. So we are going to write an English sentence for each of the following logical expressions. So here's the first one that we're going to work with. B and T. So remember this is the and symbol here. So we have an and between the statement B and T. So if B stands for I will eat bacon and T stands for I will eat toast, this is pretty easy to see what this means. This stands for the English sentence, I will eat bacon and toast. Because we're going to do both of those things. So that was pretty easy. Part B. What about B or T? Well, again, this isn't too difficult. This would be, I will eat bacon or toast. Okay, that's how we would translate that. One thing that's a little complicated about this and you need to think about is the or symbol that we use. In this course, we use an or symbol that's not an exclusive or. So when we, the logical expression B or T, that is going to be true when B is true, or when T is true, or when both of them are true. So right here, I, I've written kind of the first part. I will eat bacon or toast. That kind of takes care of the cases when B is true or when T is true, but it has not handled the case when both of them are true. So really, we need to finish off this sentence by saying, I will eat bacon or toast, or both. Okay, Because that's a, a valid, valid um, thing that can happen for when B or T is true. Because if B is true, the statement is true. When T is true, the statement is true. Or when both of them are true, the statement is true. So when you're working with the ors, you need to actually worry about the both case sometimes. So if we want to be pr completely correct, saying I will eat bacon or toast or both is, is the right way to do this. Okay, what about part C? Let's make it a little bit more complicated. What about not B and not T? So this would be represented by I will not eat bacon, because obviously not B means I will not eat bacon, and I will not eat toast, because obviously not T means I will not eat toast. Okay. So I will not eat bacon and I will not eat toast is the English representative English represent representation of this logical expression. And part D, let's do another one. What about not the quantity B and not T? Okay. So one of the things I like to do when I start getting parentheses in here, I like to use the term it is the case. Okay. So when you start having clusters of things like this, using the words it is the case helps emphasize the fact that these things are in a parentheses term, and it helps a lot. So what do I mean by that exactly? So I would say it is not the case. So it is not the case that, so I'm using not the case to take care of that not, and the case implies that I'm going to be talking about kind of a whole thing. So it is not the case that I eat bacon and don't eat toast. So here is the I eat bacon and don't eat toast. That takes care of the thing inside the parentheses. And then it is not the case takes care of that I'm taking a not of this whole quantity. So using the words the case or not the case or either the case is very useful when you using or working with these parentheses terms. Let's do a slightly more complicated one to finish this problem. What about B and T or not B and T? Again, the words it is the case or is not the case, using those words really helps with these. We're going to write this as either it is the case. Okay, So either it is the case is going to help me handle the, the or here because either means or essentially. Either it is the case that I eat bacon and toast. So this takes care of the first part up here. 
right? I eat bacon and toast. Or it is the case that I don't eat bacon and eat toast. Okay, so I don't eat bacon and eat toast is right here. So that's taken care of there. And then either it is the case has basically told me that it's either this or this. Okay, so in working with more complicated expressions at parentheses, using this term, the case, or either it is the case or not the case, really helps you break it down into the pieces properly. And one check will be when you're done, if you look at the English sentence that you've written, it should be possible to look at that and go back to the original logical expression. And I think if you read this, you would be able to do that properly.